Hey guys, what's up? Zombie here. Welcome to Evil Zombies Lair episode 41. That's a lot of episodes, and I know I say that a lot, but wow. Anyways guys, we're going to go over several things today. We're going to first talk about some personal stuff, what's been going on in life. Then we're going to go over the movies and TV, you know, multimedia news. And then we're going to talk about the anime recommendation of the week. Then we're going to go over some tech news I thought was pretty cool. And then we're going to go into the main topic. Which this week will basically be about cell phones. New cell phones and the amazing things about them. So, let's jump into it. So, first off, the personal updates, guys. Um, what have I been working on recently? I have been doing um, my A plus cert recently. I've been studying a lot for getting my A plus because I've been doing IT for a few years already. Um, already had that job, and now I'm trying to see if I can get something better in that same field that pays more than eleven dollars an hour. So that's what we're. That's what I've been working on. I've been studying a lot for it. The book I've been studying from is about fourteen hundred pages long. So. It's been a lot of material to study. I mean, I know most of it. It's just the acronyms. I I am I stink at remembering acronyms. I'm terrible at it. But I'm working on it. So I will get back to you on how that goes once I take the test. And I also got a cool mic. Let me, if you're watching the video, let me find that and show you real quick. Okay, so this is basically just for people watching the YouTube video. But I'm holding up a Rode microphone. It's a Rode shotgun microphone that has a... Was it? it has uh, basically a holder for it and a hot shoe clip, or was it cold shoe? Hot shoe clip to put on top of a camera or a stand, and then the cord that hang that goes down from it. I have an adapter because I tested it out on my audio interface um, earlier, but I got that for three dollars at a yard sale, and it works. It works beautifully. It works great. I'm guessing they just didn't know how to hook it into a cell phone because that's what some people try nowadays. Or maybe they didn't know how to get it to work with the camera. Didn't realize it needed batteries. I don't know, but I have a nice microphone now that normally costs like 70 bucks, but I got it for three. So I was really happy about that. That was a really big plus for me. So yay, equipment. But yeah, um, today was also spent just applying jobs also going back to the other topic today i just went back and forth um literally up and down the street just going business to business so that's what i've been doing recently just trying to find something a little more because uh they're cutting hours where i'm where i'm working like a lot so that's not going to be a very sustainable thing for my family so working on that that's my life that's what i've been doing recently that is what i have been up to um let's jump into the topics so, first subtopic, multimedia news. Dragon Ball Z Abridged released the last part of episode 60. That was last week, I know. But it was awesome. It was amazing. And it covered everything we wanted it to cover. And then you have to stay past the credits. You do. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what happens, but it was really funny and it was good and it was worth it. But they did a great job for it and even confirmed they're going to be continuing the series. Which I thought was fantastic. <laughs> And it's just such a good, well done, long episode once you look at the three parts that went into it. And it's like, wow, that was worth the year. <laughs> or it was like a year and a half or something for that episode to come out, huh? But it was good. It was really well worth it. It was a lot of fun to watch. And it summarized everything, all the plot points very well. But yeah, episode 60 came out. Go watch it. Uh, DBZ Abridged. And speaking of a bridge series, anime recommendation of the week. I know you've seen Sword Art Online. It's a great show. Now, since it's different enough to consider it its own show, I'm going to suggest Sword Art Online abridged. Basically, it's amazing. <laughs> There's nothing I can do but say it's amazing. Just the way they set up Kirito, he's just such a... Let's use the word brat. Let's use the word brat. I'm going to keep this censored. But it's it's entertaining. I think you'll enjoy it. It's simple. It's fun. It's worth watching. Go check it out. It's on YouTube for free. Go watch it. Um, if you want to see what anime I have seen, go to myanimelist.net slash profile slash evilzombie123. That's that's the list of all of the shows I've watched. I've tried, or at least uh, that I remember I've watched. I've tried to go down the list. I think I might have to add a couple to it now, because thinking just off the top of my head, there might be some more that I've watched since then. So 
yeah, there's that. Anyways, guys, moving on, tech news. So, Seagate released, I, I just, I didn't know when they released it, but, oh, they released it. There's a 14 terabyte mechanical hard drive that Seagate released. 14 terabytes. I still, my external hard drive is a 3 terabyte. And my internal ones are all one, like one terabyte. I have several one terabyte drives, but a single 14 terabyte mechanical hard drive. Can you imagine backing up your system on a, like a, a, several RAID 5s running all of these drives? Oh, that'd be beautiful. <laughs> That's a lot of memory. You can have a lot of memory with these. That's awesome. I mean, just, it blows my mind and I like it. Anyways, it's basically expensive as gold plated crap. It's really expensive, but it's a lot of space. I mean, that's a lot of space, but it's really expensive. I mean, expect to spend like $900 to get this. This is really expensive. It's not cost effective at the moment. I'm hoping that solid states will release memory in that amount and lower their price eventually. I'll just wait for it. That's all we can really do. Just wait. Oh yeah, guys, moving on from tech news. That was some cool tech news I just thought was fun. There's a humongous hard drive out there. Anyways, moving on. So, main topic, phones. Um, I've been going through a lot of research recently on what phones are better, what phones are more worth the price in this current generation, like what flagships are the best, why are they the best, what may sets them apart from one another. Because I've been thinking about upgrading since my... Note 4, which I'm holding up on the screen if you're listening. Yep, I have a Samsung Note 4 that I've had for a few years now. It's just thanks to uh, plan, what's the word? planned obsolescence. Basically, the company plans for the parts to start going bad or slowing down over time. I've gone through and deleted everything extra. I deleted it, took out all the widgets. I... Even cut the animation time down to half for everything. I've done a lot of tweaks. I've done my homework. I've done a lot of tweaks on it. It got it running a bit faster, but I still have random crashes. Um, sometimes it won't boot the Android operating system. It just won't boot it. Like it just says failed to load. Or it gets in a permanent restart loop that I have to pull the battery for. Even if it has a full charge, it'll just do this loop. It sounds like software issues, I know, but there's also there's just a lot of things that are going on. Won't get all the texts, won't get all the calls. Sometimes people are sitting there trying to call me to test it, and just nothing. I don't know. I'm just getting sick of it acting up. And if I'm going to do... It's old enough now where at least it's slow enough where I realize if I'm going to do a re-whole format, a whole reformat of it and get it back to factory settings, do a complete restore like that, then it's probably time to just get the new phone because I've used the crap out of this one. I have used it a lot. I'm a power user. I use my phone all day, every day because I'm an IT guy. I need to go through the help desk all the time. I respond to everybody on it. All day I'm on my phone. We respond using the video and recording everything that we're doing, all that. So because us, like, well, I guess there's just two of us now working in IT, um, cuts. But me and her basically just have to send messages like this all the time because we work at different times, so to correlate between each other. But I need to have a good phone that works all the time that doesn't just decide not to work sometimes. Getting out of my ramble and my rant, I'm sorry guys, I, I just tend to rant. I guess I'm a little frustrated with it. It's been a little frustrating for the past half a year or so. It's been slowly getting worse. New phones have been popping up on the market. There's a lot of things coming out right now and several things that came out a few months ago. And I've been examining them all. Some some phones I've been looking at, like the OnePlus 6. OnePlus is a really bit, is a really cool company I've been looking at. I'll tell you about them in a minute. I was looking at the one the S9 Plus, you know, Samsung. wasn't looking into the Note 9, of course, because that's expensive as crap. <laughs> I mean, it just really is expensive. The, the P20 Pro was another one I was looking at. I figure if I... Let's see. Oh, yeah, and the... I'm not looking at the iPhone X, but I'll just list it anyways, just because it's one of the flagship models that are one of the top ones right now. The basic flagship models are the S9 Plus, the P20 Pro, and the iPhone X. I guess now it's XS, because those just came out, but they're not that much of a big deal. 
or a big difference until they release the next generation of the iPhones. This is just like iPhone X.5, you know? Just to get you there. Just to get you a little bit more features till the next one comes out that actually has big changes. So I really don't count those that much of a new phone. There's really not that much of a difference other than just some slight tweaks. Performance tweaks mostly. But yeah. I'm not getting back into it. The reason I mentioned one, the OnePlus 6 because the OnePlus company, they get away with having really low prices on their phones with the same parts and the same software, the same setup basically as the more expensive flagship models. How do they do this? Because they wait until hardware has already been discovered, implemented, and released to the public. If it's successful, they add it to their phones. They basically wait to see how things work with the public. Like, they still have a headphone jack because they saw what Apple did, released it, people didn't like it, so they kept their headphone plug. Uh, saw USB 3.0, or sorry, USB-C was popular, they added that in, the whole t dual camera thing on the back, saw that was popular, it worked really well, had good quality, they added that in. It's just kind of what their, what their process has been, and they have great quality control. Um, I was watching a video from Linus Tech Tips when he went to visit the OnePlus um, company, and he went through their entire manufacturing process for one phone to see their quality control. And it was amazing. I mean, they do so much to these phones uh, to make sure they're good quality. And to make sure they will last. And I just loved how that went. Everyone says that their operating system's pretty good too. But enough just singing praises. That's probably the one I'm going to end up getting because, just to tell you guys ahead of time... Because all the other, those other three that I mentioned are around 900 to $1,000. iPhone X probably a little bit more. The OnePlus 6 is a $630 phone. It's cheaper. I'm, yeah. And it's something that I want to get that's good enough that will last me for years. So I, you know, I just want it to last for two to three years with no issues. And as for the operating systems... All four of these phones have very different operating systems. <laughs> Three of them happen to be Android, but they still have very different operating systems. P20 Pro, I don't know. I just didn't really feel that operating system. You guys know how how and you guys know how the uh, iPhone operating system is iOS. If you've seen any iPhone in history, you know what iOS feels like. All they really have done in the past is just upgrade, tweak, 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 fix the bugs, tweak it a little more, add some features. But it stayed, at its core, pretty much the same thing. They haven't really changed that much. It feels about the same. If you've used one in the past, you can use one now. Simple as that. Like, my iPhone 3G feels about the same to me. Or, no, no. My iPod Touch 3G feels about the same to me as my wife's um, iPhone Success. Feels about the same. But Android has a lot of variations, a lot of flavors. Um... Some people like the stock version of the operating system, kind of like with, uh, what's it called? The Google Pixel phones. It's kind of, it, That's basically just stock Android, no extra skins on top, no tweaking to mod it out like crazy. It's pretty base. That's what it is. You, get, you have what you get right there. Some people like, um, well, I guess very heavily modified operating systems that just feel different. And... Just a different kind of experience. But that's kind of what you get with uh, the S9 Plus, with the TouchWiz uh, um, OS. But I honestly just don't like TouchWiz. I have used it for years because I had a Note 2. The Android phones I've had in the past, I got the Droid 1. Then I upgraded to the Droid 3 after the buttons started falling out of my Droid 1. And then once the keyboard just stopped functioning altogether on my Droid 3, then I upgraded to a Note 2. Then once that... Just got a lot older, wanted to see something new. It just wasn't performing as well as it could have because newer apps would not install on it because it was too old. Then I upgraded to the Note 4. Now it's about time because now they're on the 9. I figure I'll upgrade to something else, different company, because I'm sick of TouchWiz. <laughs> I know it's not on the Motorola's like I said. I used those before, but I use the Note 2 and the Note 4, and they basically feel the same, but the operating system is slow. It's sluggish. It has some things that I wish it could do better. That's why I'm also looking at the Oxygen OS that they're using on the OnePlus 6 because it feels kind of like stock Android without me having to go get a Pixel or install an extra an extra 
um, theme over anything or an extra launcher, you know, because, I don't know, it just seems like a lot of hassle when you can just get something that nobody has complained about and it feels really well. Why not kind of try that? Now, SD cards. Everyone's been using them for years, and let's see, let's, where to start? Basically, two of these phones don't allow SD cards to upgrade. Um, the OnePlus 6 and the iPhone X, of course, don't allow um, X, SD card up, expandable memory or expandable storage. But does it really matter all that much nowadays? I've been using a 64 gigabyte external card and 32 gigabytes internal memory on this one, and even less on my old phone. And I, as long as I don't go overkill all completely, then I am never going to use up all that memory. I do consistent backups of everything. If you do, then there's really no reason to try and go hardcore and spend so much more money for that little bit more, you know? Or just to have the ability, um, the phone that can give you more. That's why I'm, di I'm kind of dissing the uh, S9 Plus and the Note 9 at this point on those because I don't like having to have two different file systems in there. Sure, it wasn't that hard. It wasn't that bad. But it just seems kind of pointless nowadays. You're never actually going to use 400 gigabytes of data of extra data on current gen phones. The next gen probably they'll have much better quality cameras. They'll have much better quality. Pretty much everything. The apps will require more because they'll have better graphics. Developers will probably get into it more. But as it is now, you're not going to use all that space unless you're trying to fill up your space. Just doesn't seem, or if you're just really bad at backing up and deleting stuff. There's no point at the moment, so I'm just thinking it's probably worth just going for the 256 get uh, 250. I can talk, I swear. Well, now you've heard my phone's ringtone. I'm gonna put that on silent for a second. <laughs> That's my um, text notification. Goku screaming kamehameha. Yes. What was I talking about? Crab nuggets. No, I wasn't talking about crab nuggets. I'm just... Not, oh, yeah. I just don't see a point in uh, getting the expandable memory at this point. It's mostly just bragging rights to say, oh, yeah, my memory's bigger. 256 gigabytes is probably plenty for most people at this point. That's why it's kind of the standard among these phones. And even that best version of that co from that company is still cheaper <laughs> than, problem, than even the base version of the S9 Plus or iPhone X. The, and I really, I still don't know completely how they can sell for so low. It really blows my mind. But camera quality, let's talk about that a little bit. Basically, all four of these phones have pretty comparable camera. That is really not that big of an issue with any of them. I mean, unless you're trying to get really nitty gritty on it, the, I, um, either the S9 Plus or the P90 Pro have the best camera hands down, just because of the optimization that went into those. But when it comes down to it, all of them are using that dual that dual camera setup. I think iPhone X is using the dual camera setup. I think all those are using the dual camera setup, and they all look really good. They all have great hardware. They all have good software now, since all the operating systems have caught up to each other and are pushing forward all the time now. Like, I, uh, Android Operating System 9 is going to come out soon. That's awesome. But yeah, all of them have great camera quality. They can all record in 4K. They can all record in 4K at 60 frames a second. They can all do slow-mo. I think the, the worst one is at um, 240 frames per second, which is still good. I think the... All of them are pretty comparable. There's some features that some of the phones have that others don't, but it's not that much of a thing. It's a big gripe, mostly. Because it's mostly about bragging rights. Because you're not actually going to use it on a daily basis. That features, like those small extra features, like retina scanning, like the iOS. No, I don't know. It just seems like it takes a little more time. Fa facial recognition is fine. Thumb thumbprint is fine. Okay, as long as you're not keeping your credit card numbers on your phone, why do you really care? <laughs> Don't keep anything personal. Use a VPN on your phone. Wipe all your data every time you're done using it. You're all good. 
block you, get an app to block your microphone and your camera when you're not using them. Join me in paranoia land because they are watching you. They are listening to you. It's just a fact. Anyways, guys, I'm going to stop this right here. I'm rambling and rambling and rambling. Just I've been into it recently and I just been looking it up and I wanted to share my thoughts on the good, the bad, what's pointless, um, what's bragging rights, what's actually worth having. Oh, yeah, and also, um, what's it called? I forgot to say, the OnePlus 6 that I was thinking of getting, that one has a Snapdragon 845 processor just like the nine, the S9 Plus. Same processor, same speed, it even has more RAM. So there's that. <laughs> It's technically just as fast, but it has more RAM at 8 gigs instead of the 6. Which is actually really good for a multitasker. It's really good. But yeah, that's probably where I'm going to leave this, guys. Um, oh, one last thing. I'm sorry. Not related to phones at all. I set up my. I got. I figured out how to set up my desktop computer as a media server so I can read all my video files and all my anime and stuff like that from my phone. Just over Wi-Fi, so if someone's using my computer, then I can be elsewhere watching shows or whatever. If you guys want to know how to do that, I will happily tell you how, because it was fun and it was cool and it actually didn't take that long to set up. So I can share links with you and all that stuff. Just let me know in my email or in the comments. Uh, my email is evilzombie at protonmail.com. It's in the description, I think. Okay, see you guys later. Have a good one. Bye. Tell me your comments.